All right, now it is time for our water pump kit. Let's go ahead and get that emptied. There's our impeller, screws, cup, gasket. All right, so looks like we have the liner on the top. Whether I installed those stuff when I was playing with it or if it came with it, I don't know. It is a little different from our usual one. Our usual one came with this. Now we have a cup. Whatever. No big deal. We also don't have a top liner, probably because we have a cup. So this kind of seems like a little better idea. Usually these come with instructions. I don't know if this box being all messed up was returned. Just don't know. Wish I did. Because that gasket looks like you go perfectly inside of there. Along with the new cup. So, uh, we're going to have some guessing to do here. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know if our old one had one. Our old one did not have one, but it also doesn't have little channels like this one does. So, eh. Eh. Experience shows me that that usually goes in there, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do it. So this is our water tube grommet. That slides on right where I took it off, just like so. Now we're gonna need some of our gasket sealant M. We need to put that in the groove of this guy, just like so. Has a little groove cut out to it, but uh, doesn't really mention that anywhere. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and vote. It doesn't matter how it goes on there, it just needs to. So I'll have it face the uh, water tube grommet just cause. Although the old one is still on there, not removed, and no slot, so. Okay. We'll pretend it uh, doesn't matter, which probably doesn't. Geez, that stuff is in there. What the? Okay, well that's fun. Tube blew up. Well, looks like this is a one-time use tube. Well, there goes that carpet. So, back of the tube blew off, so I just put it on via the back of the tube. Set this over on my vise where that least stuff leaking on it's not going to hurt anything. It's a lot on here, it's going to be ugly. <laughs> and we'll install the mystery o ring into the little o ring looking slot. Slide our propeller cup down and onto it. Now, <clears throat> we need to install our uh, impeller. Um, they say to coat the inside with oil. You don't need to use oil, you can use soap, so I'll be doing that. All right, got a little bit more on there now. Let's get the impeller housing bag open. We have an O-ring, so that's cool. The old one didn't, the new one does, no big deal. O-ring will go there, we'll put some triple guard grease on it, just cause. And actually this is kind of gonna be a problem. Hold on. So here's the way the uh, manual calls to do it. You install this counterclockwise and then slide the entire assembly down over the drive shaft. Problem now, we can't put this in this way because you won't be able to get to the impeller key. You put it in this way, cool, no problem. So this is going to go down. 
Problem is, if we put the O-ring in there, it's going to knock our impeller key off. So we need to install this. Well, we install the O-ring, install the impeller key. Although, you know what we could do is just put the O-ring on. Well, assemble the base plate, put the O-ring on, then slide this assembly down. Let's try that. Since we're uh, going out of order here, we're going to tap these holes now. Now, we originally had gasket and sealing compound, well, or some type of sealer on the bottom plate here. Now we have a gasket, so we're going to coat the gasket and gasket sealing compound. Our offset hole is up, so the gasket is going to go there. And our plate. And go down over and on, like so. So our little key keeper here, it's going to go installed the same way we took it off, with the uh, little rounded arrow going kind of clockwise. Hope that makes sense. I'll uh, try to remember to take a picture of the manual so you can see it. We're going to need our needle bearing assembly grease to hold it in place. Put some right in the back. Now we're going to get our O-ring. Slide it down and over the drive shaft like so. We put our needle bearing assembly greased up little keeper right onto our drive shaft. And that is basically how our bottom assembly is going to be getting put on. I want to make sure all our holes are aligned. So it's looking good so far. Install this counterclockwise so when we put it on it'll be already going the right way. What am I doing? Yeah, this is not easy, by the way. There we go. Perfect. And we got our uh, seal here. I'm going to put some uh, gasket sealant M along this seal. Hold it in place, and then it should seal when we slide it down. Now, because of the condition of our bottle, you won't be seeing much of this, but I will be doing it. And this stuff dries fast, so keep that in mind. Okay. Power key there. This goes installed like so. So in theory, when I flip this over, our key and our impeller housing be kind of in the same spot. You never get lucky the first couple tries, so just keep trying to slide it on there. So it needs to go right about there. Perfect. I'm just going to get the housing back going. This spins clockwise, like so. So our veins will be going backwards.
And it should do it. Get our screws. Coat them in the gasket sealing compound. And we will tighten them all down. Perfect. We'll double check our drive shaft measurement, make sure we're back to where we needed to be, and we, we look about perfect. To uh, sand and clean up this gear case a little more before we install it. Um, at this point, you could just install our remaining screws and put it back on the motor, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, sand it down a little bit and paint it, so I'll be putting these in later. So, I don't want to paint our black intake screens, so I'm going to remove those. Oh, and you got to pull screws out of both sides. One just hit the ground, desk, whatever. So there's one. And the other one falls right out as well. So there's two. We also have a plastic and black trim tab. So uh, I'm gonna pull that out. Um, it's on the two mark right now. So just remember that so when you go to put it back in, if you do this, that is. Always the wrong one. And to answer your question, yes, I will be tapping this too. Now, I didn't install the anode. The reason for that is you don't want to go paint the anode. Looks like we had some uh, critter friends living in here. Let's get rid of their little nest. Okay. Now, we can clean this up. So if you noticed, I only used the wire wheel where the paint was already about to flake off. Reason being, because that's where it was about to flake off. Obviously. So I went over it with some uh, 120 grit to all my sanded down areas. I'm just going to go over the case with some uh, 400 real quick, just to make sure the new paint has somewhere to stick to.
Now this step is going to separate the uh, kids from the adults here. Most people, at least what I've seen so far, are just going to go to town and paint this as it is. Resulting in a painted drive shaft, uh, painted uh, propeller shaft, painted drive shaft, shift rod, water pump. I think it's completely ugly. Uh, I'm going to masking tape all that stuff off. Now you'll uh, kind of do yourself a favor here by doing this and also the uh, resale value or motor button a little better too. I've seen a lot of motors on Craigslist where the guy's like, oh, immaculate low hour motor. No problems at all. Clean inside and out. And you can tell where he literally painted it, you know, minutes before taking the photo. It's sitting on an engine stand, the background, or the behind the motor. You got fresh paint all over it. It's like what are you what are you trying to hide there, guy? I may not have done the best uh, sanding and prep job here. I don't want to be here all day. But something as simple as not painting a you know, propeller shaft here goes a long way. It really does. So anyway, I'm masking tape this all off. So here I have some of the uh, zinc, can't pronounce it, primer. Um, I'm going to be spraying this wherever there is raw metal or bare aluminum. Alright, we'll let it dry for a little while and flip it over. Now it's time for the top coat, which is a metallic dark blue. There is the part number, focus, there you go. All right, I have a whole cut of my cardboard. Plan is to paint the surfaces along the top here and then put it in there and paint the whole thing. My phone ran out of space. Go ahead and hope the uh, footage didn't get lost. If so, I painted the top, cut a hole in my cardboard, Put it in there. So, let's get painting. Alright, let's sit for a while and do another coat. Well, it's pretty dry now. Looks pretty good, I think. Now, clear coat. Um, Evanru doesn't sell this anymore. The paint I put on here was originally made to have a clear or top coat. Now, if you look in a manual about that stuff, it says do not use below the waterline in big bold lettering. So I'm thinking it'll either wash off or it'll chip off. I have no idea. But that can doesn't work anyway, so that's out. But we do have the uh, old Rust-Oleum automotive enamel. Now this can says nothing about using below the waterline. Probably because it's, you know, automotive. But, you know, same stuff, right? So, uh... If I don't clear coat it, this thing will fade and look just like the uh, it did before painting in two weeks. Or in clear coat it, maybe get some more life out of it. I don't really know. I've never uh, never tried this in the water. So uh, I guess this will be a little bit of experiment. So I'll uh, top coat it and we'll see what happens in a few months. That's about it for now. I will return in uh, two days, Monday morning, and we'll uh, flip.
flip it over and we'll clear the top. If we need to, we'll do any touch-up paint to the top as well and uh, finish putting this thing back together. All right, gear case is painted, tape is removed. I got the uh, new hardware installed, so it's looking okay. I uh, ran a tap down the trim tab, reinstalled that. So now all we need to do is put the anode back on. Now we just got to go put the uh, lower back in the motor and fill the fluid. Now keep in mind I've already cleaned up the splines of the drive shaft, so that's uh, no real concern there. But we need to put some of the smally lube onto the splines, make sure it doesn't get stuck in there. A lot of times water pumps come with some of this stuff. This one doesn't, so I'm going to buy it separately. Now it kind of sucks if you're only doing this one engine here and have a leftover tube of molly loop forever, but it is what it is. You could probably also get away with just using grease. And that's all there is to it. Right, let's go put it in. Mine too. Uh, I already cleaned up the hardware, I tapped the holes on the uh, exhaust housing, and I coated the hardware in some of the uh, gasket and sealing compound. This bolt slides through a lot more, so I coated the whole thing in it. Just, you know, better safe than sorry. So we'll uh, slide the lower on now. And keep in mind I have the hood off the outboard, just in case I need to rotate the flywheel to line the crankshaft. But we'll see how that goes. All right, one screw is in and started. There's two. So, I think it's my inability to read a tape measure. Um, I think we are one turn too many down, causing our rod not to quite be aligned to neutral, and also our uh, grommet didn't make it onto the shift rod. So both of those things we had to fix, so I'm going to take the lower back off and try again. Okay, shift rod should be where we need to be. I put some grease on the lower grommet. I'm hoping that would uh, guide in the uh, lower one because there's lower one down there too. So now I'm going to try to force this grommet on with the rod installed because it honestly didn't feel like it was going to happen. The, the traditional method of just putting it through. Yeah. No reason to record you watching me fight with that thing for an hour. So, anyway, I'm going to get that back installed and put my shift rod back together. So, if you noticed, I took off a little shifter arm to get me a little more room and ease in here. Yeah, don't do that. There is a detent ball on the other side that when you do, well, if you're into the, uh... Let me go see if they all have it. Alright, regardless if you have a tiller shift or a, uh... Uh, remote control shift, you're still going to have a detent ball on the other side, so getting this back in is going to be on a little bit on the difficult side. So better off just not taking it out. So that's my advice. Well, anyway, I'm going to tighten down the lower, get that nut back in, and fill up the fluid. What I'm doing to help get this pin in is cramming a bunch of masking tape inside of my socket so the screw rests right on the outside. 
and uh, doesn't sink inside of my socket here. Granted, the socket's not that big, but the screw almost fits in it, so that, that should help a little. And pushing in a little bit while twisting the socket, it kind of feels like it started to grab. Push over to my wrench. And it should be good. So I'm going to check for smooth operation. So we're in neutral now. So let's pull the rope. Make sure the repeller doesn't spin. Are you hearing any weird noises? So far, so good. The propeller is rotating without any uh, nicking of any gear, so it's not even you know, close to being in gear. Let's uh, try forward. and forward. Propeller is spinning, so that's good. Yeah, feels fine. So while rotating it again, try reverse. Now let's go neutral first. Make sure the propeller isn't stuck. We are in neutral. And you just hit reverse. And we're in reverse. Oh, look good so far. Get back in the neutral. And no spin of the propeller. So, job well done. Let's get some fluid in now. So, now we need our manual recommended uh, high vis gear case lube and our gear case lube little pump thing here. Straw is going to be a little too long for this, so that's, uh, that's unfortunate. But it is what it is. I'll trim it down to the bottom here. It'll, uh, that won't be good for a lot of things, but, like I said, it is what it is. One of these days, I'm going to get some money, and I'm going to buy a phone that isn't so dark. This is ridiculous. Well, I guess it is just a dark color paint. Yeah, well, whatever. So, we have a new type of screw on the bottom that isn't flathead. It is a hex key. Uh, four millimeters would that fit, so... Probably not a four millimeter, but that's what I got that works. But anyway, we screw in our pump. We gotta get our top vent screw out. Now we start pumping until it comes out the top. Should only take a 200 pumps. Hey! So, in case you didn't guess, once that comes out the top, we put our vent screw back in. Started, which I can't. Alright. And turn it down good and tight. I always give her another pump for safe measure. Alright, now we gotta be quick. We gotta pull our tube out and stick in our uh, bottom little nut here. It won't come shooting out, at least it shouldn't, but it is new oil, so. Apparently it does. 
All right. Now, tighten that down. That should do it. Not too tight. Now I'm just going to get a rag and clean up all the oil I spilt everywhere. And that is it for the lower unit. So, it took a while, but it turned out pretty nice, I think. The only real problem with it is the uh, lower unit's all nice, shiny, and clean looking paint. The rest of the thing is completely faded. Aside from that, it came out quite well. Now, I didn't put the propeller on because I'm going to need to transport this engine around a little bit more. So, I'll put it on later. But just remember uh, before you put your propeller back on, you need to grease up the propeller shaft. You don't want that thing getting stuck on there. So, anyway, um, if you saw anything I did wrong or any questions, comments, or concerns, Let's go ahead and uh, leave it in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and uh, I'm sure there's other YouTube things you're supposed to do, but I don't really know what they are.